Hello, welcome back to our finally, after this marathon, this final section of solving fractional equations. In truth, I almost didn't even solve these two problems. We only have two here because they're really challenging and it's unlikely that you would probably see this on a test unless it was a challenge problem or if it was an advanced class. But you know what? On the other hand, I want to show you how to solve really hard problems so that you can see that no matter how difficult it looks, if you just follow the rules and never make any kind of like like crazy leaps of faith, if you just follow the rules that we're teaching you, that I'm teaching you, that you will get the right answer, no matter how complicated it is. So the first one is pretty straightforward all the way up until the end where there's a little gotcha I want to point out. The second problem is truly horrific, but I will show you how to, how to beat it into form um, so that you can get some practice. So if you want a challenge, try to solve these yourself, and then otherwise watch me and try to solve them afterwards. So the first one um, is really kind of interesting. It's a little different than what we've had. Here's the problem. It is x minus 3 over x plus 1 quantity squared. So that's a little different than what we've seen before. On the right-hand side, we have 2 times the fraction x minus 3 over x plus 1 plus 3. So this looks a little bit different than, for a, a few different reasons. The first thing is we're used to seeing fractions, but this one has the quantity squared. So it's a little bit unclear exactly what to do because the, usually we'll just multiply by the denominators, but since this thing's wrapped up in a square, it makes it a little bit outside of the family of what we've done before. All right, so I'll show you how to talk, to talk about that. Then we have this fraction, but it's multiplied by a 2, so that's a little bit weird. And then it's add, you have a 3 added, so the terms on the right-hand side are a little bit weird, and the term on the left is quite different than what we've seen before. So the trick to this is, if you're given a problem that looks a little bit different or a little bit out of family from what you've seen, then you have to use the rules of algebra that we have taught you up until this point, that I've taught you up to this point, to put it into a form such that it no longer looks weird anymore. That's just kind of something you have to get used to as you get more advanced math. Nobody's going to tell you how to factor it or how to whatever, but you have to know the rules of exponents and the rules of fractions, and you might have to manipulate things into a way such that it doesn't look weird anymore. For instance, remember we talked a long time ago in algebra. I'll go ahead and write this over here. Um, if you have a fraction like 2 sevenths, and it's raised to the power of 2. How do we handle that? We say, well, we take the exponent, apply it to the top, and we exponent apply it to the bottom. So it's 2 squared over 7 squared, right? So you can remove this fraction inside the parentheses and, and where this exponent is applied to the whole thing and apply it separately to the top and the bottom. And that's going to make this thing easier to deal with because if you apply that, that rule to this situation, what you're going to then have is x minus 3 as a quantity squared, and on the bottom you'll have to wrap it up as x plus 1 quantity squared. Exponent applies to the top as a quantity. Exponent applies to the bottom as a quantity. Now this is not so different than what we've seen before because x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1 times x plus 1. So see now it doesn't look different than the types of denominators we've seen in all the other problems, but it looks different to begin with with everything wrapped up. Now on the right hand side, for now, I want to write it exactly as it's written, 2 dot, which means multiply, x minus 3, x plus 1, plus 3. Now we need to figure out what to multiply left and right hand side by. So let's wrap our parentheses here and wrap our parentheses here. We have to multiply the entire side. Now on the right hand side, this is a 2, which means 2 over 1. This is a 3, which means 3 over 1. So the only denominator that looks ugly is the x plus 1. So I know I have to multiply by x plus 1. But if I just multiply by x plus 1, it'll cancel this one. But when I multiply over here, it'll only cancel with one of them, and one will be left over.